In this video I want to take a brief look into the switch that I've made to switch between um, a battery bank here 24 volts at 80 ampere and the grid inverter from Steka. It's a Steka grid 500 M4. You can see that the Steka grid is now uh, putting energy, energy into the grid and um, I can switch between the batteries here and the inverter, grid inverter. This is the circuit, how I've made it. Take some time. Um, solar panel 1, solar panel 2, fuse, a fuse and the peculiar thing in this circuit is that the, when I want to charge the batteries the solar panels have to be switched in parallel uh, via a diode they enter the um, uh, stabilizing circuit but when I want to um, feed into the grid the solar panels have to be switched in series and in that case they deliver maximum 90 volt here at the input from the grid inverter. And here you see the inputs from the grid inverter. The positive and the negative lead. Maximum 90 volts at this moment. The Steka can handle somewhat more, but 90 volt is very good, I think. Um, so I needed a lot of switches to switch off the battery charger completely and here also to switch off the inverter completely because a grid inverter um, uh, does not have in this case with the Steka inverter does not have any connection to the ground. It works as an island here in an electrical sense an island and there must be no ground connection and when it does a ground connection the inverter switches off or the, um, uh, the fuse pops out or the earth safety switch pops out. I found it experimentally. This was the first circuit that I've made. It was a failure. I made it with uh, a lot of power uh, relays here and in fact it's completely the same circuit as I show here, but although it is the same, it didn't work. And one of the reason is, reasons is, I think, that I uh, flipped the um, uh, relay uh, contacts here. So that here you, you have a make connection, but you can flip both contacts. And that means that uh, the circuit can get unreliable. So this whole circuit is going to be uh, demolished. And what stays is this, the electromechanical switch. Hope you can see it. It was uh, made with uh, pieces of copper, small strips of copper, and here the contact blocks contact terminals to the grid inverter and here to the battery charger and uh, here are the inputs and you can see here how I made the relay contacts um, it's made from a piece of copper small plate of copper and here you see uh, spring um, with a screw that goes inside the multiplex wood here this wood and so you get you, you can set the contact power the pressure from the contacts by um, aligning this uh, screw this is a very very simple way to make a reliable switch. It takes some time, of course, 
you will need some copper, you need some screws, you need uh, springs, etc., etc. But it is very reliable. And I don't have, <coughs> sorry, I don't have the problem here that the earth uh, fuse pops out when I switch from the uh, battery here, the battery charger, it's better here, to the grid. That was my problem. So uh, this, this, this is again the circuit. I want to demonstrate now what happens. Now I switch from the grid inverter to the battery. And here you can see perhaps that now it's in the evening that some solar energy is charged into the batteries. I don't think, uh, I don't see much, but on a sunny day it can be 5 ampere or 10 ampere or so. And the grid inverter is completely switched off. Switch back again now to the um, grid inverter. And when the grid, grid inverter starts, you always see this flashing LED. And after approximately one minute or so, the frequency from the grid inverter uh, is the same as the frequency from the grid. It, has, it is aligned to the same frequency. Uh, of course, that's necessary because otherwise you will lose a lot of power. It can be out of phase. And when the grid frequency and the frequency from the staker inverter are in phase, the uh, green LED. Um, burns constantly. I can wait for this moment. It takes approximately one and a half minutes or two minutes, but I think that's not necessary to show. So, to prevent all kinds of problems, um, don't make circuits uh, in this way. Keep it nice and slow, keep it simple. And here's a circuit that you can use. And this is how it's made.